Thanks for rejoining us on a KHCS special broadcast. I'm your host, Alex Rabina, right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHCS. Today we're talking about uh, the recent kidnapping of a three-year-old girl in Newhall this last past week. And I have uh, in studio with me Jonathan Kraut. He's a private investigator. Jeremy Steffen, he's a network specialist at it from Adage IT. And we also have uh, Deputy Dubin from the L.A. County Sheriff's Department on the phone with us. Uh, Deputy Dubin, I want to ask you this question. Um, what, what kind of support do you need from us, the community, to help you guys um, do your job the best when it comes to situations like this? Well, you know, that's a great question. And I think that it goes just beyond situations like this. It goes along with, you know, total community involvement. And it starts with being a good witness and, and, and keeping an eye out on your neighborhood. You know, when I do uh, different various neighborhood watch meetings and I, I do different speeches for various community groups, I always, uh, you know, try and, try and relay the fact that obviously uh, a deputy sheriff or any police officer isn't going to be everywhere at all times. And, and although we may patrol your neighborhood and although we may patrol the same neighborhoods day in and day out and we get to know, you know, the residents of that neighborhood, nobody knows your neighborhood better than you do, obviously. You, you know, you live there, you come home there, uh, you know your neighbors. And I think that it's really important to take the time that if something doesn't look right or something, you know, raises the hair on the back of your neck, give us a call. Let us come and check it out. It takes two minutes for us to drive by, check it out, talk to a suspicious person. Um, I think that's important. And, you know, we've had a, a bunch of cases, especially here in the Santa Cruz Valley, with uh, people jotting down license plate numbers or snapping a quick cell phone video or a picture. And we're not, of course, asking you to, um, you know, put yourself in harm's way or anything like that, never. But a little clue like that, even the first couple of digits of a license plate can really, it, we've solved cases that way. So I think it's that community involvement. And I think here in the Santa Cruz Valley, we're extremely lucky and extremely fortunate that we have such a great community involvement, but it's little things like that that really go a long way when it comes to solving investigations. I know this is going to sound like a silly question, but is there such thing as a neighborhood watch? There is, actually. And the reason why I say that is because, I mean, I've had probably, I've owned about four different homes um, in my lifetime, and, and a couple of those homes in the neighborhoods that I, you know, just bought the house, there's a sign that says neighborhood watch, but no one ever knocked on my door to say, hey, welcome to the neighborhood watch, or we're meeting at this home. And I've never been a part of it, but but now that I'm thinking about it, I'd love to either start one because I know you can't sit around and wait for somebody else to create it. If you want it to happen, you see the value, you should just self-declare it and make it happen. What, what would that look like if I wanted to start that in my neighborhood? Absolutely. Well, we have a couple different options. One, you can reach out to our community service, uh, community relations representatives here in the Crime Prevention Unit. They can provide you some information to kind of get the ball rolling where to order those signs, the city will come out or the county will come out and hang those signs for you, proper height, proper installation, uh, and really help you get that off the ground. If you want to physically meet in your neighborhood and hold neighborhood watch meetings, that's one option. Another option that people like, especially in today's day and age, you know, people are busy, people are really taking to social media, is a program and an application called Nextdoor, which is nextdoor.com. And basically what it is, it's a virtual neighborhood watch that once you sign up, you'll be vetted through Nextdoor that you actually do live in a specific neighborhood. And once you're vetted, you're able to communicate with your neighbors. And little things, whether it be, hey, anybody have a cup of sugar that I can borrow, or I have a dresser that I want to sell, to, hey, have you seen that suspicious vehicle in the neighborhood? Then the added bonus with Neighborhood Watch, uh, myself and other deputies here in the Crime Prevention Unit are able to push out messages to neighborhoods hey, this is what we're looking for. We have this guy on the loose or this girl on the loose that we need your help finding, or this is some major incidents that we've had in your neighborhood. So we really have an open communication with law enforcement and the residents that we serve, along with the residents being able to quickly and effectively communicate with each other as kind of a virtual neighborhood watch. That's great information, especially the nextdoor.com. I never even knew that that was available but, I mean, you know, the way the world's advancing in technology, I mean, I'm not surprised that we got access to that. Right. And, you know, in our patrol area here in the Santa Clarita Valley, including the city limits and the county limits, you know, we serve approximately 270,000-plus people. Uh, so, obviously, you know, that's a big job. So, with these programs like Neighborhood Watch and these neighbors, you know, becoming active, engaging each other, communicating, communicating with us, it's really it's helping us solve crimes. 
And so far, we have approximately 5,000 people in the entire Santa Clarita Valley signed up on Nextdoor.com. It is free. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It just takes a few minutes to sign up to engage with your neighbors. And even if you don't want to actively post a message, you can still read what other people in your neighborhood are saying and keep up to date on the latest information in your neighborhood. Now, if you have experience with, with you know, countless uh, neighborhood watch programs, can you give me a little bit of insight on what, from your experience, what would be the one neighborhood that really just kind of, you know, takes it over the top? Like, what are some of the things that they're doing? Well, you know what, we have a lot of really proactive neighborhoods in here, uh, in the Santa Clarita Valley, whether it be condominium complexes that hold meetings to homeowners association that use their clubhouse to hold, you know, bi-weekly or monthly meetings to get together and talk about what they've seen in the neighborhood and some different crime prevention techniques. Um, anything like that, and then you take it a step further, just the top-of-mind awareness, Uh, just being aware of your surroundings, being aware of, hey, we as a community, we as a neighborhood uh, are looking out for one another, and if we see something, we're going to say something. I love that. Um, Sign me up, and if if no one's around to sign me up, I guess I get to create it, and and I guess just declaring it on the air, if if that's what it takes, then that's what I'm going to have to do. Yeah, Jonathan here. Uh, Deputy Dubin, a quick question is, uh, how do you get the word out, uh, like, besides the radio, like, next door is a great idea? I've never heard of it either. I've lived here 15 years. Before you answer that question, uh, we're going to go on a break. Okay. And then uh, we'll, let you, uh, we'll let you kind of answer that for us when we come back. You're listening to a special broadcast right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. And welcome back to a special broadcast right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. This is Alex Rabina. Today we're talking about the recent incident that happened in Santa Cruz Valley last week where uh, a, a three-year-old was um, kidnapped, abducted, I guess they're all the same words, was taken from a home. And uh, we have uh, Deputy Josh Dubin from the L.A. County Sheriff's Department on the line. And uh, Jonathan, you wanted to ask him that question. Can you rephrase that question for him? Yes, Deputy. Uh, so... This, uh, this online system where you can register called nextdoor.com. Which Jeremy just signed up for right. during the break. Right. Where you can connect with your neighbors and send, I guess, alerts. Is that correct? Correct. You can send messages. You can send alerts on suspicious type of activity. You can contact the sheriff's department. Uh, many of our crime prevention unit CPU deputies uh, engage on Nextdoor. So uh, a lot of stuff that you can do in that program. And it's free. And there's an app. You can go online to nextdoor.com. So it's convenient. Um, and it's a great virtual neighborhood watch. So my question, Deputy, was uh, how do we let our neighbors know that we can do this? Because the more eyes, the more neighbors, the more effective it is. If Absolutely. I'm the only one uh, registered in a five-mile radius, it's not going to help anyone. How, do I, how do I mobilize my neighborhood? Well, you, what a lot of people are doing is, um, especially if you live in a condominium complex, a homeowner's association. Um, I know in the homeowner's association that, that I live in, Somebody contacted the management, the Homeowners Association management, and uh, a little, I, I say advertisement, but it's not really an advertisement, was placed in the monthly newsletter, just like, hey, you know, this free service is available, you might want to check it out. That's one way to do it. As far as the law enforcement side of it, as far as Santa Cruz Valley Sheriff's Station, we use numerous platforms uh, to, to push out that message. Not only do we use our Facebook, our Twitter, our Nixel feed, um, I have a great partnership with KHTS AM 1220 that we do the Neighborhood Watch every other week, talk about stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get the message out, and, and day by day we're getting more and more people signed up. But you as a resident and you as a person living in your community, you know, when you talk to your neighbors, encourage them to sign up for it. Say, hey, you know, check out nextdoor.com. It's easy. It's free. It's a great way to communicate, and it, you're not going to receive spam You're not going to receive messages from people that don't live in your community. These people are vetted that they do live in the community, that they care about the specific neighborhood that you live in. Uh, So it's a great communication tool, especially acting as a virtual neighborhood watch when a lot of people, you know, today don't have time to actually go to neighborhood watch meetings or or a physical meeting type of thing. I have a question. Had this guy actually gotten away with this child, would there, would there, or could there be a system that you could have broadcasted to the community to let us all know what we could be looking for to be your eyes and ears out there to report back to you guys? Absolutely, that's a great question. You know, we're going to do a couple different things in an instance like that. One, we're going to have a fair number of deputies boots on the ground right there at the scene and in the neighborhood. We're going to be doing PA announcements. We're going to be utilizing a helicopter, which has a very loud PA system on it. 
that's going to be in the neighborhood directly. Now, from back at the station, we're going to utilize social media. We're going to immediately send out a Nixle message. Again, a free service. You can sign up for it at www.nixle.com, N-I-X-L-E. Nixle is a geographic-based service, and I would be able to send a message to the residents that have already signed up for Nixle to their cell phones, texting them, texting them a link, hey, kidnapping in this area, I'm going to put in maybe a two-mile, three-mile radius around where the crime happened, and the people that are signed up for Nixle in that area are going to get an immediate text message to their phone letting them know what's going to happen. Now I'm going to take that Nixle message. I'm going to broadcast it on our SCV Sheriff Twitter account, almost 10,000 followers. I'm going to broadcast it on our SCV Sheriff Facebook account, 5,000 followers. I'm going to put it on our next store account in that neighborhood, almost 5,000 followers. My Nixle account here at the station has almost 5,000 followers. So again, I'm able to get the message out just through the crime prevention unit here to 20 to 25,000 people instantly. Now, let's amplify that message. Let's get it out to local media. Let's use our headquarters account. Now let's start broadcasting it there. Now you can see how the numbers are really multiplying. So in a matter of seconds, not only do you have boots on the ground, you're utilizing various platforms of social media to contact residents immediately in an emergency. Do any of those come through via text? Like, they, they like do. whatever, just get a text message saying looking for a, a black Nissan Sentra in this area, and then quickly, what the the what am I looking for, or why? Absolutely, and you it can set that up through Nextdoor.com through your settings if you download the app. But more importantly, you will get a text message uh, if you sign up for the Nixel service, which is an outstanding service. Many government agencies throughout the United States are utilizing Nixel now. Again, N I X L E. Uh, the city of Santa Clarita is utilizing Nixle, the fire department, California Highway Patrol, L.A. County Sheriff's, all utilizing the Nixle service. Free service, outstanding to get information, especially when it comes to a natural disaster, an uh, incident like a kidnapping, anything like that. You're going to get that message on Nixle immediately. Now I'm a little confused about why I'm just hearing about Nixle now. And if I'm just hearing that, i got to start thinking about how many other people don't know about it. Well... Knowledge is power, sir. A- absolutely. And that and is why we're here on this radio That's show. correct, and that's why I decided to have the show was to get this message out. But, but I, need to be, I need to be talking about it more. I think we need to keep, just keep saying it in different venues, different areas, and just keep broadcasting it. Because I think the average person just thinks of going to Twitter or going to their Facebook. And, you know, you get stuff instantly there, too. But, I mean, to have something, to have a text message, if I'm out, you know, at dinner and I'm leaving a restaurant, I get a text message letting me know something's going on around the corner, then my eyes and ears are pe- pe- peeled. I'm looking still. It doesn't, I don't have to wait till I get home to log on if I'm doing that, because some people aren't always on social media. Absolutely. And let me, if I may, share a quick success story as far as Nixel goes. Uh, a number of months ago, we had a suspicious package inside a vehicle over in the Kohl's parking lot, the Whole Foods parking lot. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, And this suspicious package was located at approximately 5 or 6 p.m. Now, as you can imagine, we have Island's Restaurant there. We have Whole Foods that's open. We have Kohl's that's open. This is a very busy shopping center on a major thoroughfare within our city. So, obviously, thousands of people moving around. I was able to quickly circle on our little mapping system here, two- to three-mile radius around that text message, People's phones that have already been signed up for the Nixle service. Hey, we're dealing with a suspicious package. That is the police activity that you see in the area. Uh, if you know anything about it, please give us a call. Here's the phone number. And then I copy that message onto Twitter, Facebook, Nextdoor, all of our various platforms in order to get the word out quickly. Thank Just you so to- much. That's again, Nixle, N I X E L dot com. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for taking your time. Holy. I appreciate your times very much. You're listening to a special broadcast right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.